and John the Engineer Termel, famous for my white hard hat, part of the political uniform. And I'm in favor of legalizing gambling, prostitution, and dope, and interest-free loans at the bank. So that's my politics. And I got involved in the marijuana fight in 2000, helping exemptees fight their conditions. I'm a guerrilla lawyer. And then in 2000, Terry Parker won his big case. The court ruled that it's unconstitutional to prohibit medicine for people unless you got an exemption for them to get it. So they said, we're striking down the marijuana prohibition so that sick people can have their marijuana, but we're suspending our decision for a year for the government to come up with an exemption for the sick guys so the healthy guys can't get any. One year later, they issue the new regs. Two years later, we find out they didn't work. Why? Because the Hitzig decision said, hey, there's a limit on the number of patients per grower. That's uneconomical. And there's also a limit of three growers per garden. And that's uneconomical. There should be more. And the court said, granted, that's unconstitutional. Therefore, the marijuana exemption didn't work for the last two years. So they had to drop 4,000 charges against everybody charged who hadn't been tried yet in those two years. So, 4,000 charges dropped because the exemption hadn't worked during those two years. But now that these two caps have been struck, now that you can grow as much as you want, now there's, it's working, so the law is alive again. Well, two months later, Health Canada retards say, we're gonna put the limits back on because we're now supplying it to people, it might make a difference. Eight years later, the court rules, hey, putting those two limits on growers back on gummed up the exemption again. The Crown said to the Supreme Court of Canada in her memorandum, which I got, oh no, the court in R versus JP. JP was a kid who got busted for possession of marijuana in Windsor. The court in JP ruled that the combined effect of Parker, who needs it for medicine, and Hitzig, who said the exemption didn't work, meant the exemption didn't work and the law was invalid for two years between July 31st, 01 and October 7th, 03, when they fixed the exemption. Now, the exemption works, law is alive again, but we're dropping the charges. Two months later, Health Canada put the two conditions back on. Last year, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that those conditions gummed up the exemption again. And the Crown Attorney said, oh no, they're going to ask the courts to construe that these decisions say the MMAR didn't work again. They're going to say the law was off again. Yes. And the Supreme Court of Canada dismissed the appeal. And instead of dropping the charges against everybody again, they just kept quiet and kept busting people. But if they know that you know that the law is dead because you file a motion for the return of your pot when you're charged, and you file a motion to quash your charges and a motion for constitutional relief, they go, uh-oh, he's one of the guys who knows the law is dead. We better let him go. So the other suckers with lawyers keep pleading guilty and paying their fine. We've had a couple of dozen people have their charges withdrawn. Derek Francisco busted growing marijuana. He was a grower, a criminal grower, and he got busted. And he got his exemption. They came to him and said, okay, tell you what, plead guilty, just house arrest. He said, no, 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 no house arrest, go back. So the lawyer went back, came back and said, okay, plead guilty, just possession, not cultivation, not possession for the purpose, just plead to possession, no arrest. He said, hey, I want my equipment back. The lawyer said, whoa, 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 no, no, no. He said, go ask. So the lawyer went and asked, came back, okay, plead guilty to just possession, no house arrest, and we'll give you your equipment back. He said, whoa, whoa, I want my pot back too. The lawyer said, are you crazy? You gotta get a section 24 order signed by a judge, they'll never. He said, go. The lawyer went, came back and said, okay, just plead guilty to possession and they'll give you no house arrest, 
all your equipment back and all your pot back. And he said, I'm not pleading guilty to a law that's dead, and I know it's dead. Either you drop the charges, give me my stuff back, or I go forward with my motion to declare the law dead. So, next time back in court, they gave him his, they withdrew the charges, gave him back his equipment, judge signed an order to give him back all his pot because they didn't want him in front of a judge saying the law's dead. So now, if they find out that you know that the exemption was faulty when you were busted, which means the law was dead when you were busted, they let you go. But they're not going to announce it to the world because they got a hundred guys a day pleading guilty all over the country with lawyers and paying fines. But if you go in there with no lawyer and say, I know the law is really dead, they're going to withdraw the charges. Like, and we also show people how to get exemptions and stuff like that. So on Friday, week before, guy got thrown in jail. His name was Maloney, Sean Maloney. Montreal kid, single father, two kids, part-time work, and uh, he gets busted with a pound of marijuana. And then he gets an exemption, application signed for 18 grams, a month's worth. So the lawyer says, hey, you know, for sentencing, convicted, to look good, offer to take rehab, 24 weeks of rehab. So anyway, he pleads guilty, offers to take rehab, and the judge smashes him with 30 days in jail. First offense. So when he gets out on weekends, so he's got to bus it back and forth to Montreal, Ottawa every weekend. 200 bucks a weekend, as long as, as well as losing three days work and finding babysitters for his kids. So after getting out first weekend, I heard about him. I said, when do you have to go back? Friday night? Show up in Toronto Friday morning. I'll get you in front of the judge of the highest court of Ontario, and we'll see if she'll, you know, we'll keep you out. So we showed up, 9.45, we served a notice of appeal and a motion to stay the sentence pending appeal on the Crown Attorney's office, saying the motion's going to be heard in 15 minutes. You can do that, ask for short notice if it's important. Well, within an hour, it was in front of the judge, and the judge is telling the clerk, get the crown down here. He told the judge's story about how terrible it was. Crown shows up, ready to fight about whether the law's dead or not, but then he looks at the conditions of the sentence, and he, oh, God, even he's puked out by it. And then he said, okay, we'll consent to the release pending appeal. The judge comes in, goes, wonderful, but I can't stay the sentence, I can only vary the bail. So she says, what conditions do you want, Mr. Crown? He said, well, be good, standard. He said, you got any money for bail? And the kid said, well, I had 500 bucks, but I gave it to the police to get out first time. They're going to get it back, but I ain't got it yet. And the Crown says, ah, forget the money, no money. So the judge granted him bail on his own recognizance. We're across the street at the Justice of the Peace signing his undertaking. The JP comes out and says, hey, there's no money mistake here. We said, no, no, that's what it says, no money. He said, no, no, you got to have money here somewhere. We said, no, no, it's zero. So, he went back. Later on, Sean found out that it was the first time in 35 years the Justice of the Peace ever had a bail order issued for no money. Release on your own recognizance out of the Court of Appeal of Ontario. So, he now doesn't have to go back to jail, the appeal will be over, and these genteel judges will never send him back to jail, they'll vary his sentence, even if he's still convicted. So, our Paul Cohen defense means that Parliament only legislates, and the courts only abrogate. So a court can strike down a bad law, but they can't strike up a good law. Yet the court said that when we fixed the MMAR, that brought the prohibition back to life. But there's a special section in the Law 43 Interpretation Act that says you can't fix something over here and bring something back to life over there. But the court said they did it. So it boils down to, I have kids at my website where if someone had a conviction in the past, you can fill in an application for an extension of time to overturn and say, I didn't know when I was convicted the exemption was bad and I should have been let go. And I'd like my conviction overturned, my money back, so I can go to Disneyland with the kids. Or if 
you're charged. We've got defense kits, application to quash, application for the return of your pot. As soon as they know that you're applying for the return of your pot, they know you're making a medical defense. Now they can't destroy your pot no more. Gerald Fox was here earlier. He's coming up in August. He had seven pounds seized, got his exemption. They withdrew the charges and it said, but we destroyed your seven pounds of pot. So he sued them to get it back. And they said, you had to apply within 60 days of the bust. Because most pharmacists who want their controlled substance back that was robbed by the criminal will apply within 60 days. But the guy who's been charged as a criminal can't apply yet. So he did. He'll be in front of a judge to find out if he gets the money back for his seven pounds of marijuana. But in the meantime, for people who are busted, we have a series of forms at the kids' site. First one, you file the application for the return of the pot. Second one, you file the application that you know the law's dead because the exemption wasn't working while you were busted. And once they find out you know that, and you probably tell them I'm gonna get an exemption too, now they have every incentive in the world to give up. Favorite story out of Peterborough, Benny Elmwood, Mark McDonald, both got busted growing. Both got exemptions eventually. Both filed motions to quash their charges. The judge dismissed it, said I disagree. First guy appealed, like I told him to. Waste the court's time, make it expensive. Second guy pleaded guilty, paid a fine. A week later, they withdrew the charges of the guy who was still fighting. So, if they know that you know the law is dead, and if they know that you know how to fight on your own without a lawyer, you see, if you got a lawyer, you're being punished by the lawyer's fees that are going to break you. They're happy. All they got to do is see a guy with a lawyer, and they know he's already being punished. But you come in there with no lawyer, now they know this guy ain't being punished, we're going to be punished. Real Martin, one of my cases, made a motion to prohibit his charges because the law was dead, lost. Appealed to the Supreme Court, three steps. Came back, lost his trial. Appealed to the Supreme Court, six steps in all. Well, Mark McDonald, the guy who got his charge withdrawn, he lost. The government beat him. They won, and then they withdrew his charge because he was going to be too much of a fight. So, if you are too much of a guerrilla lawyer, they will withdraw the charge. Ken Sargent in Windsor, last year, filed his application to quash, they withdrew the charge, and he wasn't even sick. So once you know the law is dead, and you file a paper, they're going to stop you and throw it out before you can get in, the in front of a judge to make it official. I got no judge to say officially that the law is dead for the last eight years. But we got judges who say officially the exemption's been bad for eight years. But no judge will say the prohibition went with it like the first time, except us. If you're one of the guys who's arguing that you were busted while the exemption was bad, so the law is dead, like with the 4,000 dropped charges, they screwed it up again. The government will withdraw your charge, most likely, to get rid of you. So, I have here at my website, my forms, the page Termel Kits, where you can get all the kits necessary to fight your defense now, or to open up an appeal, or to file an appeal, or to appeal late. So everything you need to give the government a nightmare headache in the courts without a lawyer is here. So, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel with the mission to legalize pot because yes, the sick guy's got a right to have it, but I'm a healthy guy and I want to use it for the prevention of all the things it's good for once you got it, before I get it. But I lost that case, but I'll keep making it. Thank God for these hemp expos, it's becoming more acceptable, more responsible, and still legal. Johnny Engineer Termel signing off from the Treat Yourself Expo Hemp in Toronto. You got some questions? Yeah. All right, go. Is this work in Quebec? What? Is it work in Quebec? Yes, it's even better in Quebec because in Quebec none of the doctors will sign. We won a case in Ontario two months ago here, the Murdoch case, 
in St. Catharines where the guy beat his charge because they said not enough doctors participate. In Quebec, it's no doctors participate. You're even stronger than the Murnau case in Ontario. No doctors participate in Quebec. 